Honestly, Sabrin and Eard could step on me and I would literally thank them for it. Stella, I... <laughs> <laughs> She's not seeing heaven. I'm afraid. I am scared. Look at this. Look at this. What am I supposed to do with that? Hey besties, it's Joel, and this weekend I'm going to be reading a fantasy book that I've been dying to read for a long time and hearing how much everyone is enjoying it. I am very much excited, but I've also heard that a lot of people are intimidated by the length, and so I thought I'd create this reading vlog so that you can just tag along the journey with me and read the book along with me as well. And so, for this weekend, I'm going to be reading... The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, and it is definitely a behemoth of a book. I hope you're all doing very well and that you're looking after yourselves. If you've yet to grab that drink of water, please do so. You must remain well and hydrated. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go do that as well, because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. And I am just in love with the cover design of this. I just think it's so beautiful and mesmerizing and especially with like, I want to say dragon, but it might also be a worm. I'm not, I can't remember like the differences between the two. Like some of them have like four legs, some of them have two legs, but I think that's like, probably the difference between a wyvern and a dragon. I really need to go study my dragonology again, but I'm just in love with this cover. The jacket design was done by David Mann and the illustration was done by Ivan Belikov. Plus with the prequel cover, A Day of Fallen Night, by the same people. I just think both of these books are just gonna look so satisfyingly wonderful on the bookshelf. And I'm hoping, like, if I really do love this book, there are some special editions. And I just think the yellow on this cover is very striking as well. Like, we all know the sapphic trifecta and all of them have yellow on their first book covers. And so I feel like I've heard that there's, like, a sapphic relationship in Prior of the Orange Tree. And so I feel like the Prior of the Orange Tree could be, like, a relative of the sapphic trifecta. I think that would just be pretty cool to include that in there. I'm just very excited to read it and I'm doing it in like a single reading vlog purely because of how big this book is as I feel like I might want to start doing more like single book reading vlogs alongside like the series reading vlogs as well. I feel like they're quite good and especially since I did one with Babel and a lot of people really loved the way that I did that reading vlog and so whilst I'm probably just going to be in my bedroom this weekend it's gonna be fine and as well with Babel I remember just like making so many different comments about the book and being able to go into such depth with it especially like one of the comments that I made about how I wanted to learn a new language and be able to immerse myself in that language. And as such, I'm really excited to be using Speakly, who have also sponsored today's video. Essentially, Speakly was created by two polyglots who had researched thousands of language learners for over six years. Through this, they're able to create a unique method of teaching words and phrases based on their relevancy in real life situations. Especially with like the Speakly mobile app, it's really easy to integrate language learning into your everyday life. I've recently been taking up French again because I studied it in high school and I I didn't really study it after the fact and I really want to get back at my French teacher because she always got mad at me for pronouncing things incorrectly and just I'm studying it out of spite essentially and you know what? Spite is a great motivator. Plus Speakly offers you everything that you need in order to learn a new language and it's the only language learning app that actually lets you choose how you want to study it as well. I just find myself recalling and retaining a lot more vocabulary than I had previously and you're able to set up on the mobile app for them to send you a notification when it's time to study and so if I'm like inside I usually just like sit on my bed or if I'm outside I usually go to a cafe and just make sure I can earn all of the points for the day so I can maintain that streak because if I lose the streak oh but it's safe to say that I'm really looking forward to learning French further and there's a bunch of different languages on there as well for you to choose from and so if you'd like to try Speakly for yourself then you can use the link in my description to get yourself a seven day free trial and also 60% off if you decide to sign up for their annual subscription and so yeah as I was saying I feel like this book is just going to be such an amazing journey for me to go on. I am really looking forward to getting back into my high fantasy roots because like whilst I did have a little bit of fantasy in Babel, I've been really excited to get back into reading more adult fantasy as it's the genre that I probably love the most and definitely in the autumn I will be going back to my fantasy roots and I feel like that's just gonna be quite an amazing time. And so this basically follows Queen Sabra in the Ninth, who must conceive a daughter in order to protect her realm from harm. However, assassins lurk in every corner and seek to destroy the a thousand year rule that the House of Brathnet has had over Innes. Sabrin's lady-in-waiting, Eid Duran, is an outsider at court, and though she's risen to this position, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages, and she protects Sabrin using some sneaky forbidden magic. And across the Dark Sea, Tane has been risen to be a dragon rider since she was a child. However, a fateful decision may upend everything she has ever known. And finally, whilst the divided East and West refuse to parlay 
day, forces of ancient chaos are awakening from their sleep and will see destruction in their wake. And so, you know, I feel like this is very much like classical high fantasy, like a very much a bricked home. It gives me like such good vibes of like of what a good high fantasy can contain. And so I'm gonna immediately go and read this. I think I'm just gonna read book one and then I'll come back. I think there's gonna be a lot of ground to cover in that book. And so yeah, this is the start of The Priory of the Orange Tree and I'll see you in a bit, besties. Okay, but honestly, Sabrin and Eid could step on me and I would literally thank them for it. Hello, besties. So it is like nine o'clock and I finished book one of The Priory of the Orange Tree and it's upside down. This book, book one is like a third of this book in and of itself. And it very much acts as like establishing the scene, setting up the conflict and basically placing all of the key characters in the novel where they need to be for the later stuff to take place. And so Samantha Shannon does this in such like a masterful way. The way that the plot is very grounded but then starts kicking up and the stakes get higher and higher throughout the first act, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what else happens throughout the rest of the story. However, there are two other pieces of media that I feel like fit the vibe. The first one, which I think is much more of a niche reference, is The Witcher because I think Loth and Kit very much play to like the Yaskier and Geralt Netflix adaptation style of The Witcher and I feel like that in and of itself was very cool to see. And then the other piece of media I would say The Power of the Orange Tree is like is the Dragon Age video game series because they very much have like similar veins of like dragons or worms and plagues and various things happening. It was similar that I drew a comparison but they're very much distinctive in their own ways. But so far the plot has set itself up very well in terms of establishing the world, telling this story about an ancient evil that is awakening and everyone basically trying to prepare for it in the best way that they can because they don't really know what's gonna happen. They have their religion that guides them but then we don't really know what is gonna happen in actuality and so faith is basically the thing that they use to drive themselves forward and give themselves hope. There are so many different ways that Samantha Shannon uses elements of the world in order to drive the narrative forward. I mean we have Sabrin and her position as a queen and how basically her only role essentially is to give birth to an heir and this definitely is forced upon her a lot throughout the first act. And we see this as Eid is trying to protect Sabrin and then also trying to like figure out the different things and the different machinations that are going on inside of the court and it's just so interesting to see that but then we have over in the east Tane trying to become a dragon rider and I feel like that definitely took a back burner on this kind of part of the novel however I feel like in the later books it's going to become very much more of a role and I'm very excited for that. Then we have Nicolae's who I'm very much invested in also I kind of feel like he's not going to have a happy ending. But Nicolae is, is great. I really love this kind of like conflict that he has as a person because he's very morally grey and I very much love the way that he analyzes situations and tries to protect people and also protect the ones that he loves through protecting their relatives and that's all I'm saying about that. Again, Loth and Kit were very interesting and I loved their dynamic but now it's gonna be very interesting to see what's gonna happen now that the, we're going into book two and especially because of what happened at the end of book one. I'm a bit obsessed to see what happens but then also I'm very sad 
and I'm very like, mm, you know, yeah, I don't know how to feel. I do not know how to feel. However, I just think that the MVP throughout this first part is Eard because Eard is just so phenomenal. I love Eard with like every fiber of my being. I don't know why. Yeah, there was just something that immediately drew me to her as a character and the way that she seeks to protect Saber and the way that they're slowly getting to know one another and like become more comfortable with one another. It's just really, really great to read. And I initially dislike Saber because of the way they treated Eard, but then as like we get through later on, I feel like we're gonna have this conflict happen between them where Saber basically has to like diminish a lot of her preconceived notions and Eard is basically gonna have to do the exact same thing and both of these women I think are gonna get together. I do not know yet, but I feel like they might. I feel like they might. I am just very excited to see what's gonna happen in the rest of this. The next few parts are definitely going to be like more fast paced and very much hitting the ground running. And I'm very much excited to see more of the history, the lore, the magic, the wonder as I go on. And so yeah, I'm gonna get to reading books two and three. I'll be back to give all my thoughts and feelings and you know the gist. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit besties. Okay, good morning besties. I have finished books two and three of The Prior of the Orange Tree and um, there are just so many thoughts that I'm having about this book, but ultimately I'm continuing to love this story. You don't really notice how long this book is because you're so engrossed and immersed in the world that you're literally just flying through the pages really quickly. It's just been such a marvel to be in this world and one of the most poignant things that I have come across in this book so far is basically the commentary surrounding the ownership of their ability to bear a child. And you see this twice through two different women in this book. It's this kind of like ownership of someone's uterus in a way that really like highlights the insidious quality of it. A person with a uterus should be able to choose if they want to bear a child, they shouldn't be forced into that position. And we have this duality in a way of someone having to bear a child in order to perpetuate the faith that they would protect against a nameless evil. And then you have someone else who's basically given that option as a way to survive. It's very interesting to see how reality is reflected in fiction. And just to see this in this book was very interesting. And I think Samantha Shannon also mentioned that uh, this is the kind of thing that is going on in the prequel A Day of Fallen Night and so I'm very intrigued to see how that conversation continues in the prequel but so far the way that the story has continued in the next like 250 pages has just been stellar. I... <laughs> <laughs> Ead is still my favorite character. I just think Ead in and of herself just has so much compassion and love and especially for like one of the other characters. I think that she just literally is trying her best to like defend the people that she loves and also making sense of like the greater conflict that's at stake because even though Trude, oh Trude, Trude, mm, Hmm. She's not seeing heaven. She is not seeing heaven. Because of Trude, I think Eard is like basically on this like mental journey now of like protecting. I think it's gonna ultimately lead to a repetition of history, you know? I, I love when I notice like the little things within books and like a lot of books really like to play on the conventions of history repeating itself. And I feel like a similar thing is going to be reenacted between Eard and Sabran. And I don't know how that's going to work out yet, but I feel 
feel like something is gonna happen between them. And then we get onto like Nick Clays, who I feel sorry for with his like past, but he literally caused an action that was such utmost disrespect. I almost threw him into the water. I think he's gonna have a little bit of a redemption. I don't think it's gonna be like massive, but he's just such an intriguing character in and of himself. He's able to convey such ideas and thoughts. And then also the fact that he's trying to finish his lover's research just like tugs at my heartstrings. And then Tane, oh my God, Tane. I hope everything is good for her in these next two parts because, uh, yeah, she's definitely been through it. Now that she's gained something, I feel like this is the time for her to rise up and reclaim what has been taken from her, reclaim who's been taken from her, and I'm very excited for it. But I think my most exciting thing now is Loth and Iyad. Loth and Iyad, I think, are gonna be such an intriguing dynamic in this next part because I feel like shit is about to hit the fan. And I don't know how I feel about that because I know more people are gonna die. And I'm hoping it's no one that I extremely like. But one thing I will say though is Samantha Shannon really nails the political and court intrigue, especially when it comes to like nailing like the little hints and the little pieces of information that are sprinkled all throughout the book. And then you begin to like uh, piece everything together and it just like blows your mind. My notion page for this book is literally filled with so many different notes. And one thing that I want to start doing is purchasing paperback copies of books that I've loved to then annotate them on a reread. And so I think I'm definitely going to be purchasing a paperback copy of Priory to see what things I can gather upon a reread. I just think the next like two parts of this book are going to really, really hit. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm going to get to reading parts four and five books, four and five of the Priory of the Orange Tree. And I'll be back in a little bit to give my whole thoughts. I'll see you in a bit, besties. I'm afraid. I am frightened. I am scared. So I finished parts four and five, books four and five of The Prior of the Orange Tree, and some of the tassels from my bookmark decided to fall off, given the fact of how frightened I am. It literally snatched the wig off of my bookmark. Like, look at this. Look at this. What am I supposed to do with that? Priory. I have so much to talk about. There was things from the previous talking section that I didn't even highlight and went back to my notes and was like, oh my gosh, I need to talk about that. One, I feel like there's a kind of parallel between Adam and Eve and Lilith in this. I feel it in some ways and there's definitely a parent in some ways and then other ways I think Samantha Shannon subverts it, but I definitely feel like there's some kind of Adam and Eve and Lilith parallel in this book, particularly if I think of the orange tree as like the apple tree in the Garden of Eden and certain characters characters as Adam, Eve, and Lilith, and I think that's pretty interesting when you begin to think about it. I feel like this part was majorly dominated by Tane and her dragon Niamhethum because those two, those two are just epic. I feel like their friendship and their kinship is just one of the most wholesome, one of the most deepest connections, I think, in this entire book. Just the way they've interacted with each other thus far throughout the story has just been amazing, and the way that Tane has grown as a person throughout the book has definitely been in part thanks to Niamhethum. Also in part thanks to like her own resilience and her own like determination to survive. As we come to like the end of this book now, I feel like like it's been a journey for everyone. Dismantling preconceived notions, accepting other people's faith and beliefs and religions. And really it just shows how everyone can come together despite their differences. It was just interesting to see this kind of unfold and unfill. And I definitely think that Samantha Shannon does this well in terms of the world that she has crafted. It's very much believable to see why people are coming together in order to come 
come and defeat a great evil, an ancient evil. And so now we've coming to the end, I feel like the stakes are at the highest, the highest they've ever been in this book. We have like 100 pages left. I do not know how we're going to do everything that needs to happen in these 100 pages. However, I have no doubt in my mind Samantha Shannon will pay it off very well. There's just something about this book that has like gripped me so much and I'm just very excited to see how this ends. Like Eod has basically been my fave, my main character, my true queen throughout this entire thing. I just feel some kind of like connection with her. Eod has been that character that I've root for since our very first interaction with her and I love her to bit. Sabrin has been one of my faves as well. I feel like she has come on a lot of growth from like her previous position but then also finding her confidence in herself. The amount of commentary and character building that we've seen throughout this novel surrounding women and their roles and power within the world has been a very intriguing one. I feel like Samantha Shannon has done this succinctly, but then also very sharply as well. I just feel like Samantha Shannon has excelled in this field, and especially as we come to like the world building as well, which has been one of my most favorite parts of this book because the world building is so rich and so inviting. You can just feel that there's a rich lore of history that gives you enough that you feel confident that the author knows the history of this world. There are just so many lines within this book that I have come to love, but I'm really sad as well because so many heartbreaking moments throughout these two parts, and I just hope everything is going to be okay for my favourite characters. We will probably see some death, however, I feel like things will be okay in the end. But for now, I have to finish The Prayer of the Orange Tree with part six, The Keys to the Abyss. I guess until I finish the book, I'll see you in a bit, besties. Okay, Bessie, so let us get the dust jacket back on so that we can discuss. Also, this is your reminder once again to take a drink of water. I finished The Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon and part six slash book six was really able to deliver on this impactful and epic narrative, finishing in a way that really felt like the story had ended, but also left us enough that there could be more to return to later on. And it really made us think about what's going to happen in like the next 10 years let's say, because I feel like there's definitely a lot that can happen and a lot of things might happen, but at the end of those 10 years, there is definitely something that I am praying happens, you know? Between the final battle against ancient evils and a lot of characters culminating and finishing their character journeys and just finally getting some like explanations of like certain parts of the world, it was just a phenomenal ending to this story. I think the only critique that I would have about this and probably my only critique about the book as a whole was that I felt like the final battle wrapped up pretty quickly. However, I do feel like that's more so a personal thing because I kind of like when final battles are drawn out a little bit more. It's literally of no detriment to the book in and of itself. And so Overall, I rate The Prior of the Orange Tree five stars, which is probably no surprise to anyone because I just really love a good medievalist epic fantasy. And it makes me even more excited for the prequel novel, A Day of Fallen Night, which comes out in February of 2023. I don't know how I'm gonna wait that long to read that book. And so like, hopefully I'll be able to get an arc of the book at some point, think as far as. So it's a few days later. I am currently editing this video and literally through my door today, <laughs> oh my god, that gave me a stitch. <laughs> this is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. It is taking me everything not to start this book right now. <gasps> I'm so happy! I think this is the first time you're properly seeing the piles, like... Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. This is why I'm moving. But yeah, there's not really much I can say about the final part of this book without going into like spoilers or things that are already going to be mentioned when I wrap up like my feelings about this book. I feel like the biggest thing that I took away from this book was just the expansive and immersive world building. This truly is a kind of hors de force when it comes to delivering an immersive world and really enriching the reading experience by leaving us with bits of history and culture and just delivering on like how thick this book is with a thick world history and you know I love that it's just great and plus look I had to match the book with my outfit but yeah not only did the world building add a lot of depth to the story and it also added a sense of realism the characters for me are probably on par with like the rest of this book like Ied, Sabran, Nicolaise, Tane, Loth all five of them are literally just like so enriching as people we do have a lot of secondary characters like Meg and Rosalind and like Comb as well that really also give some extra depth to like the world with like political intrigue friendships and relationships etc etc. Although my one thing that I do feel is that Loth for me reads as asexual and I don't know if that's canonical or not. Just all the other characters are so queer and so great and I loved it. The way that this novel is paced and structured really helped to deliver this epic story of massive proportions of how a world of difference almost coming together in a way to try and defeat something that's larger than life and larger than death technically. I don't know, I just feel like Pari is going to be one of those books that I'm going to be inspired by when it comes to writing my own epic fantasy. If you've been scared to read the Prior of the Orange Tree, this is now your sign to go and read it because even though like it is quite a big book, the way that it's written really doesn't make it seem like that at all. And I don't know, I'm just really happy that I've read this now because it's been on my bookshelf for like a while. I literally got this when this first came out in 2019, so it's been on my shelf for three years and I haven't read it. This is probably motivating me to read some of the other fantasy series that have been on my bookshelf for a while. I'm looking at you, Miss Bourne. I'm looking at you, Robin Harbour. Yeah, that's basically most of my thoughts surrounding this book. All the non-spoilery ones, anyway. Spoilery-wise, huh, there is a lot. There is a lot. I mean, hmm. I know a lot of you would love me to start doing, like, spoilery chats and stuff, but I don't really know what form that could take in. And so, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today as I read and ramble about The Pride of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. And a massive thank you to Speakly for sponsoring today's video. You can use the link in my description to go try out Speakly for yourself and go learn a new language. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I upload next. I'll have all my social medias in the description down below for you so you can follow me on every single other platform. And yeah, I think this is really ushering in a new wave of fantasy now. However, I am literally moving house in two, three weeks. This is probably one of the last times you're going to see this bookshelf like this before the books are packed away. And so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.